Whoa, looks like I am live. Welcome everyone to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. I have the Soundstream Tarantula Triple X 10K here that we're going to be doing today. I did a little post on Facebook last night seeing what people wanted to do and everyone was pointing towards this 10K. So I'm just going to do some prep work here while I wait for people to come in. I really didn't give notice for this. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of hang out for a minute. Hey, good hey morning, Damon. I figured, uh, I figured I'd start off with this 10K here. It really isn't in that bad of condition. I mean, I have dealt with a lot worse than this. Uh, let me get some zip ties real quick here. So this is the typical 064s uh, on the power supply. And this uses the IRP 360s. Uh, I don't know how many people do a lot of work with these uh, Soundstream amplifiers, but they use those 360s in the outputs. And I think it was last year I was talking with my... Uh, supplier and the 360s became obsolete and got replaced with the 360 LCs, the low capacitance. And they told me that it's the same value as the 360s. So I'm hoping that that is still going to be the case. Um, I have not used the 360 LCs on the what is this the dlx 4600 i think is what this card is oh the irp 360s yeah i i uh i think it was year last year or the year before that i uh I was thinking ahead. I used to do, get a lot of Soundstream amps in back then, and I uh, got myself a whole bunch of 360s. Uh, yeah, this is the DLI 4060. This uses that drive card, that green drive card. I th actually think I sent you a picture, Damon, um, that DLX 4060 drive card that uses the the uh, IR that 2113. Uh, Heat drive I see on that. I am not a huge fan of these cards, uh, this design in particular, because it uses an auxiliary power supply on these that can throw people for kind of a loop. And at first, it really threw me for a loop, that's for sure. Oh, hi Damien. I just as no sense looking at your stream, love your content from Caribbean Trinidad. There you go. Um, also, Tech, hey, thanks for joining in. Um, you, you know, if you have any questions at all, I love answering questions. I've been uh, teaching people uh, for most of my adult life. I have been, uh, I was an industrial electrician, or I spent 20, oh gosh, 25 years. Uh, teaching people how to be a troubleshooter. I was one of the well-known troubleshooters for uh, industrial projects here in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, that's how I kind of ended up being here. If you can troubleshoot a circuit, you can figure this out pretty quick. As long as you understand transistors, diodes, uh, well, transistors, Pretty much our diodes. If you can understand diodes and the flow of electrons, you got it. You got this stuff made. 
So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to cut out all the power supply transistors. So on something like that, I don't even I don't even question what's good or bad because all new transistors are going to be going in on this. So uh, um, I will try to make my way through this amplifier today uh, with the time that I have and uh, we may even get down into some epoxy repair I don't know you guys can see this area right here that got toasty I'm not showing any resistance in the PCB itself so the PCB didn't really get burnt uh, to a point where it got carbonized uh, and conductive. I'm not showing any uh, resistance in those burnt areas, but I'm still, of course, going to remove the burnt area to reduce the chance of any uh, conductivity, odd induct inductance in between traces. make sure I'm not cutting out anything important here. These are all 064s. This amplifier uses the uh, the FMG 36s. What are those? Uh, 30 amp, 600 volt, I think. If I remember on the, uh, let me see here, the FMG 36. I think so, because my the 33s are 30 amp, 300 volt. I'd have to go back and look at the data sheet. And they also have one diode over here. Looks like a 60 amp diode. That is, they must be rectifying an auxiliary circuit. I'm just not seeing that particular circuit though. because they already have their auxiliary transformer here, but I'm not quite sure what they're doing with that one. I really don't have a lot of time to reverse engineer this. This is going to be pretty much a really simple repair. It's really just the power supply that's failed. I don't show any shorts in the uh, output section. Knock on wood for this 4060 driver card. There we go. I knocked on wood. Um, let me scoot this over and show you guys real quick. Kind of a long board here. But let me scoot this over and show you guys this card. This is the card that I would have the biggest concern about the repair of this amplifier. So there's a drive card right here that is um, almost like a PIC MCU based card. It's got that I see on there that's programmed. So if that has failed in any way, then this card I would have to find a replacement for. I do have a source for replacements, but not here in the States. Let me continue on cutting these things out, make sure I'm get, cutting out the right things. Sorry for the reach around in front of the camera. I've already got all my new 064s ready to go. I probably am not going to be able to get them in today. Uh, it is Friday, so my I do have a kid that gets out of school early on Fridays, so I will not be able to spend all day on this. But I will get as far as I can. I also have a uh, Taramps 15K. I had two come in at the same time for warranty repair. I got one done yesterday, and this 15K just had an absolute tragic failure. I was debating on replacing the board. I do have another 15K board I could put in it. But hey, that takes the fun out of it. I, I repair things. That's what I do. Uh, if, if I can do it without having to replace a board and have the joy of repairing it, then that's what I'll do.
and of course it does you know save money uh on tar amps and things so all right let me just get all my wires out of the way here Uh, does that one have all the drivers that drive the outputs on each side, kind of like a Type 4? Um, no, it doesn't. Does it? Uh, uh, let me think here a second. I'm really... So this doesn't have... Oh, it does. Yes. Yep. Oh, I remember. This is like the... The Soundstream... Oh gosh, there's another Soundstream amp that uses this output card uh, that I'd worked on. Oh, it's been a while. That used drivers in between, sandwiched in between capacitors. And I was like, I was like, why would they do that? Why would they cram the drivers? I mean, as you can see, they cram the drivers. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that right there. They cram those drivers side by side there's no room for those to breathe whatsoever uh, and then of course it heats these capacitors up and i was thinking to myself now wait a minute as those transistors heat up and you start to lose your timing or something you could easily lose the outputs so maybe these are set up in a way that they just don't drive hot i don't know but that's just a really odd way of designing things All right. Oh, I was working on this. So I'm getting all sidetracked here. I have, uh, oh gosh. I have 21 amplifiers in line currently. Uh, so just extremely extremely busy uh, so I do apologize for all you guys that are putting in your requests through my website uh, my lead times are three plus weeks right now uh, some boards I'm depending on the situation when I diagnose it if it's not a component level repair of the board I may be able to get you out but most amplifiers of course have a component level repair that needs done so uh, it'll end up on the bench. All right, so I'm just going to do some quick cleanup here. Of course, with my trusty Q-tips. For those people that don't like Q-tips, I love Q-tips. Don't get me wrong. I still love my toothbrush too, but eh, get that in there. I don't think so. Uh, so, um, I'm just going to go around and clean up the board itself because I like to see what's going on. Um, when I see a burnt area of a board, I, I thoroughly inspect the PCB. Because who would have thought, thought, you know, when you burn glass up like this, or fiberglass, it turns into carbon. Well, turns into something that's conductive. And what you don't want is, especially around your gate circuits, you don't want anything conductive. You don't, you don't want to gain any capacitance in your circuit. So you really want to look it over, clean it up really nice. And of course, too, it makes the customer happy when you, you know, they can look at their amp and go, oh, hey, that looks great. So I just have a little different thought process, I guess. And I initially looked at these vias, and they don't really look that bad. There are some that are a little toasty, but... Again, I have seen vias that are completely missing uh, out of the board, so these are not looking bad at all. This looks like just one of your typical power supply failures. 
just shorted transistors. They pop open and and then uh, once you lose one, the rest kind of act like little fuses. And it's all about uh, parallel load sharing. As soon as you start losing your parallel buddies, your the next buddy's gonna fail. So that via right there might be a little interesting. Uh, gate resistors are looking intact, but of course we are going to verify that. We always verify everything. I do get questions um, about durability. And, you know, and, and I've been seeing this a lot more too. Uh, and for any guys that are, or gals, any people that are watching this, if you have a question on durability, um, especially when it comes to the question of, well, when you repair my amp, will it be half ohm stable? Stable. That's an interesting word for amplifiers. Um, no, it's not. I'm just going to tell you no. Um, unless it has been designed to be half ohm stable, uh, I'm going to tell you no. Because more than likely, if you take an amplifier that's rated for one ohm and you hook it up at half ohm and it burns up, it'll come back to me. And um, I uh, I don't cover stuff like that. I will let you know what it's rated for as per the manufacturer recommendations and go from there. Can you run it at half ohm? You know, a lot of these Korean boards, they're pretty resilient. Uh, not like the, not like the Brazilian boards. They're, they're, they're beasts, but I am seeing that they're not as resilient when it comes to loads. Uh, but these, these Korean based designs, they can take some abuse, but that's, that's the word right there, abuse. And if you abuse the amplifier board, it, it it's going to fail, but Hey, I have no problem repairing your failures. So is this half ohm stable? No. Maybe I'd have to look at uh, Soundstream's specifications for this amp. That side got a little burn up. Um, I don't think they've rated this. What are these? These are the 360s, right? I. Uh, what makes an amplifier stable for those impedances? Well, it's your your RC network, your resistor capacitor network, um, and your inductors. Uh, will aid in determining that that question. Ooh, this side, this side here. This side got a little toasty. I'm gonna have to use something a little stronger. So, uh, I think it's TE equipment. You, I don't know. You could probably get this elsewhere too. But I, I uh, buy stuff off of TE equipment, and they have this. Uh, isopropyl spray in a can. Oh my gosh, this stuff is wonders when it comes to burnt stuff on boards. When it's in a can like this, it has no chance of uh, absorbing the moisture from the atmosphere. So this stuff, when it says 99%, is 99%, and it eats right through this stuff. It's kind of expensive, of course, uh, but as they say, Time is money, and money is time, so. Cleans up nicely, though. And, of course, I'll go back through uh, and do a lot more board cleanup once I get all these legs pulled out. As you can see, all the transistor legs are still in the board. So, I'm going to heat up the, the hacko here and... We'll get those legs pulled out. I'm just getting a general idea of what the condition of the board is because this is going to tell me what I got to do. If I got to prepare myself to mix up some epoxy today. Um, I don't think, if I have shown you guys my process of epoxy, it's been a while. Uh, so maybe we'll get to that. Stay tuned for that. I'll show you how I go about mixing epoxy and redoing boards. It's uh, quite an interesting process. For all you people that do epoxy work or mold work.
And speaking of mold work and sound stream, here is something that I made for the production of sound stream end caps. So I made these, these little plastic end caps you get on those sound stream. Uh, and it says, uh, you can't really can't see it, but it says sound stream up in there. So what I did is I molded uh, a good sound stream end. But of course, you can't buy those ends. And I molded that and I made it made a cast for them. So when I have broken ends, I cast an end, paint it up, put it on the end. Well, let me catch up here on the chat here real quick. Uh, da, 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 yeah, should be. I replaced lots of gate resistors that were okay just so I could clean under them from the blown fits. Yes, yes. I can't stand dirty boards. I really can't. And they stink, too. I don't like sending amps back to customers that stink. Um, I, uh, I have plans in the future of actually making an ozone box uh, big enough to hold. I'm starting to see a lot of 20 and 30K amplifiers in, so big enough to hold something like a 30K and a box, an enclosed box, and using ozone to clean up the smell of burnt boards. That's in the future plans. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, Big Stone. Hey, good to see you here on this uh, live stream today. Hey, man, a long time, a long amp today. Uh, happy to watch new live things any day. Always happy to help. I am always happy to help any technician. Oops, sorry. I do have dogs. No, they're good. So all you guys that are wearing headphones, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I do have two big black labs here that will bark at anyone that comes in the doors. So please uh, be aware of that when it comes to your volumes. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, all the modern full bridge cheap amps have the bare minimum output filtering and 100% rely on the software for itself. Is yes, yes, it, they do. They really heavily rely on the the rise of those uh, just just by design um, so I think that's where you start to see the differences between you know old-school amplifiers and today's amplifiers you'll see that there's a lot of reduced filtering uh, the inductors get smaller uh, so yeah yeah you can kinda if you look up the data sheets on some of the gate drive ICs you'll see uh, in the circuit examples, how the inductor itself and the capacitors affect the ratings of the output maximum load. So it's interesting. That's how I started to teach myself about, again, I don't like the word st stability, but the minimum load, minimum impedance of an amplifier. I just started looking at the design circuits of uh, drive ICs. So, how's my stream health doing? Good green. All right. Uh, ozone box. Brilliant idea. Yeah. I think it is. I think it would be, I think it would work. Uh, if you use ozone on these boards that burn up like this, you know, it has, that, it has that smell that you just, it'll be there forever. I'm thinking ozone in an ozone box, not too long, because you don't want it to break down any of the components or plastics. That would be a take a while, I think. That it would reduce the smell. That's just something in my plans. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up the hacko here so I can pull all these legs out. Um, and what I do is I draw what transistor, top of board, of course, um, is in what location. Uh, the resistors, uh, there are a few. The resistors aren't burn up, but I'm probably going to end up taking them out so that I can work on the board. So that's a 1K. Uh, 1K. So the resistors themselves survived. Uh, one by 1K. Yeah, 1K, 1K. So these are 1K pull downs. 1K, uh, which you'll see on the video that I released on the 15K that I did yesterday. I guess so. I got myself all turned around um, about the 1K the versus the 4.7K on that Tarns 15K. So, uh, drove me crazy for a minute. But 
I figured it out. Uh, so these use 1K pull downs. Um, so I, again, I labeled which transistor was in what location. And then on the bottom side of the board, I labeled the traces, which direction the traces go. Because as you start digging out this fiberglass, you may start hitting traces, you'll pull traces, you'll break traces, and you'll need to know where they go. Um, most drives are pretty typical, so if you uh, can't figure out what goes where, uh, most gate drives for power supplies are all the same. Sorry for the glare on my lights. I'm still, of course, working on a lot of things uh, when it comes to uh, my recording here. So let me try to keep the glare off you guys here. Where am I at? Power supply side. Okay. Yeah. And it'd be nice to tip it my way anyways. Let me get something up underneath there. Oh. I wish I wish manufactured manufacturers would use a little bit thicker PCBs too. Because man, these flex. And I don't like to flex boards. Uh, copper doesn't flex in like that in that direction, so you want to be real careful when you're flexing your boards to not overflex them, because you'll be uh, fixing traces. Oh, and the poor and there's some things that are damaged it looks like the end plate of the amplifier was loose so it broke off the green led and it broke off the remote uh plug that's a bummer i mean i can replace it i i do have these uh it's just more things i got to take care of all right so what i'm doing is i'm focusing on the power supply oh i'm pulling the legs yeah Losing track. Uh, let me get back into view here. All right. Let's go ahead and pull these things out. And then, of course, this is... I don't want to say the tedious part, but... If you cut the transistor out first, this does go by pretty quick. As long as the legs aren't welded, I should say, into the via. There's some times where your via would get so hot that the leg will weld itself to that copper. Some of these have been a little toasty. So, any of you guys working on amplifiers today? If so, let me know. What are you working on? Damon, I'm sure you're working on one. Oh, and I need to make a note too, a reminder note to ask about uh, your board that you're asking, your digitizer or the LCD screen. I'm not sure if the person I work with is going to be able to uh, they may be able to point me in the right direction, but they uh, they work directly with the manufacturers of uh, ICs and, and uh, components, uh, resistors, capacitors, transistors, ICs. So I will see what she says. Ooh, that one got to it. So sometimes when you've been really hot, you're going to have to add some uh, solder and hope and pray that that via will free up so hopefully it does oh yeah pulls right out yeah this board isn't too bad just another typical uh power supply repair
and I'm wor working with a guy too. So on these Vias, if you're using something like the uh, the Hacko here, what is that? The the FR301. The what am I set on? I'm set on I'm set on a one. So I'm at 350 degrees Celsius. I don't run this very hot because it doesn't need to be very hot. You use too much heat, and you're going to start to lift the traces off of the PCB, and um, that's no big deal. I mean, you on lifted traces but it could become a problem uh, when you go to reinstall transistors and you want to be able to make sure that's secure uh, because these things are going to be probably in vehicles that have that 30 hertz windshield flex going on. So if you see a windshields flexing on a vehicle, you, you know the poor board is flexing too. So I'm just going to spin this around. And do the same on the other side. Oh, uh, let's see here what we got. Um, uh, let's see here. Here's the moment full bridge. Um, output filter say amplifiers reduce is reduced probably to cut costs and because copper is still yeah, copper. Um yeah, back when I was still an electrician, you know, we're talking uh, a while ago copper itself was extremely expensive even on large scale stuff so um yeah just it comes down to costs but then at the same time i think it can come down to the change of the design uh, may allow to run reduced amount of uh, components so could be a change of design. Oof, toasty. Uh oh, I think I have a Yeah, I think the trace on this that one there might be lifted on the top side of the board. This is the uh, this is the boring part, I should say. Pulling all the cut legs. But when you pull ten thousand of these things out, you you learn the quickest process that you have, you know, with the equipment that you have. I pretty much for the most part have retired my Hacko, my 808. Not, I use it every now and then when I need a lot of heat. I'll use it on uh, removing or installing terminals, uh, power, you know, the, the terminals on the speakers or the power supply terminals. Uh, I'll use those or I'll use the Hacko 808 on putting transformers back in or pulling transformers out where you need a lot of heat. But this little 301 here, this thing is this thing is just one of the best things you can have for the price, I, in my opinion, for uh, when you're doing amplifier repair. You kind of use it like an all-in-one tool. Just like that, they're all out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the drivers once I clear the garbage. Clean desk. Got to have a clean desk. Let's go ahead and pull the drivers on this. Uh, hey Marty, uh, how's it going? Oh, the kicker board. Oh, yes, yes. Is it, uh, I can't remember. Did you get that up and going? I think you did, if I remember right. Uh, 
Uh, Marvel Bears, uh, Chris Logic, happy to see you here. And nice, nice, nice. Oh, guess what I have back? I have that US Amps, that AX, what was that thing, a 4600? The output capacitors right after the inductors, all four of them failed. I'm literally tragically exploded. And I, I have no, no real cause of how that happened, but I, yeah, he hooked it up. He said it was just playing just as hard as can be. And then the capacitors failed. So, uh, I'm not sure, but I see the, you had mentioned the US Amps, the eggs, the DE. Well, yeah, I've got a DE in also that I'm trying to find new capacitors for. Ah, oh, gate resistors. Yes, yes, gate resistors. Oh, what was I doing? I was pulling drivers out. All right, so I'm going to need to add some solder to these. Let's see here. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder. And free up this driver without pulling any via. Preferably. I'd like to try to keep them intact. Ooh, I don't know. There it goes. Oof. I think uh, I think these have seen better days. Got a little toasty in there. So if you see me kind of kicking the uh, soldering gun over, it's because I'm using that force to straighten the legs. I know you probably shouldn't do that with the end of these desoldering guns because once you wear the tip out, you uh, got to replace the tip because the tip will actually get hot enough to start melting, at least on my 808. But again, I use, I use this as a multi-purpose tool. It's great at soldering large areas, it's great at desoldering, it's great at straightening legs. Yeah, I think this will be a relatively easy fix. Ooh, that's burn up pretty good. Uh, oh, but I see the via still. Uh, 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 Come on. Uh, uh, nice. Uh, Again, you don't want your iron in that spot too uh, long. You will pull that via right up. Uh, Vias don't like heat. Nice, nice, nice. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those drivers out. I'm going to leave those 1K resistors in for now. Since those are not burnt up, I may be able to clean around them. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, let me think here a second. Nah, we're going to pull them out. That's how long it took me to decide to pull them out. So we're just going to go ahead and pull those 1Ks right on out of there. Adding a little bit of new solder needed to free them up. 
if the solder looks burnt, crispy, it kind of gets a really kind of a weird look to it. Just uh, go ahead and add some new solder to it. And don't fight it. Because remember, the more you fight it, the more damage you can cause to the board. I got one here that's a little questionable. That might be kind of cooked to the top via. Oh, what do we got here? I hope. Coffee Micro Mage. Hey, good to see you here. Yes, yes. I had my coffee first thing this morning before I started this. I didn't have very many um, emails I had to respond to today, so I was able to start on this pretty quick. Uh, let's see here. Uh, to remove instantly in one hit, especially the 2249, I use an old but well designed. Yes. Uh, Copper bar, if it put on three pins, but born, it go away fast and easy. Yeah, yeah, that I've seen. Um, uh, I've seen wide. I don't know what you'd call them, like chisel tools used. But the thing is, is that just adds another piece of equipment to my table. And I've got, I've got. Oh my gosh, I've got. Uh, you know, I have fifteen feet of table here that I don't need any more equipment on. That's for sure. Uh, so, yeah, but that, those TO247s, um, yeah, so, like, if I needed to pull the outputs and all the outputs were still good, yeah, then I, I use the desoldering gun and desolder each pin and pull the transistor out, to whereas if I had a, uh, a chisel bit tool for the gun I could do it heat them all up at the same time and just roll that transistor out at that point but I don't have something like that another thing on the old to-do list yes everyone does have a personal method yeah Switches, ah, oh, Damon, switches. Well, you want to talk about some expensive stuff. Wow, they, uh, for some reason, those little things, I cannot believe what they're asking for those. And I don't know, I that means I'd be tailoring to people that are more likely to spill something than to, uh, you know, destroy or, you know, pop an amplifier. Uh, I don't know if I would want to deal with liquid damage stuff all the time or not. Uh, let's see here. Where am I? Drivers. Let me flip the board around again here. So, as you can see, the driver's right down here for it. And I'm just going to grab my... Needle nose pliers. We're just going to pull them right out of there. As long as they're not soldered to the, uh, or soldered, welded to the via, we'll be good. They should pull right out based on what they were doing on the other side of the board. So, but I did have that one that was giving me a little bit of a hard time, which I do believe is probably going to be from being welded to the trays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach right down in there. Oh, it did. Yeah, so this one happened to weld itself to the via. I'm going to cut that leg because I am going to get that leg out of that via. I want to retain that via. So what I did is I... Uh, I cut the center leg out of that transistor and left it in that via. We'll get it out. I just don't want to damage the top part of that via. So it looks like the board, when, uh, when this burned up, it really did not burn up the PCB. Uh, so 
when I take my tweezers, the tip of my tweezers here, and I just scrape at the top layer, it's just the paint that's coming off and the silk screen. And the PCB underneath is still white, which is, that's good. White is good, black is not. Black is carbonized, but white is still good. Or I should say a tannish, brownish color. And for all you people that don't like the sound of fingernails down a chalkboard, uh, you're probably not going to like the sound of tweezers going over burnt. PCB. So I'm just removing the paint just to see, make sure none of this board is truly carbonized. And of course, uh, how can you tell if it's carbonized or not? Take your resistance reading between the uh, between the vias you'll know if you have a short. Well, it's really not even a short, too. It's going to be a really, really uh, high resistance value. Like, like in the, it'll be in the mega ohms. Yeah, I didn't think this board was carbonized. I had checked this earlier. Uh, and there was no resistance reading at all. Ten K, ten K, ten K, ten K. Nice, nice. So let's go ahead and clean that up real quick. Getting rid of any of the um, leftover transistor guts. So the only spot that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem with is this via that's got the burnt leg in it. Uh. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get that out of there. Oh, it pulled it out. Nice. It's in the uh, desoldering gun now. Nice. Perfect. There's a little bit of area here. Yeah, there's just not a lot of areas of concern here. Looks like right around the pull down resistor here, there is a little bit. of carbon going on here. Yeah. That's probably the worst spot is right here at the pull down resistor. 
The rest is looking pretty decent. So, I may have to fill that in. There's one hole. But luckily, it's the pull down and not your. Uh... Oh, it depends on which side of the pull down this is. If it's the ground side. It's really not that deep. That's just kind of a surface. So yeah, this is uh this is like the tedious part of things here. Is this where you gotta kind of be kind of meticulous around your traces and uh, remove that carbonized part of the PCB until you get down to the good PCB. Which luckily this isn't all the way through. So, I really am not concerned that this is going to have any uh, durability issues. I think what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and Fill this. Yeah, because it's not all the way through. Which is kind of a bummer. I'd prefer it really to go through because it's for me it's easier to work with. Um because what I'll do what I do is I just remove the PCB and then I'll use my uh, captain tape to mold the back side of it and then pour it but yeah this is just really just surface just on the surface so as long as I don't have any Conductive material between the uh, pull down resistor and the next transistor. I think we're going to be doing pretty good. Nice. And then a Q tip, of course, with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol here. We'll pick up all your fine little burnt PCB particulates here, the dust. Fiberglass dust is just something nasty. All right. So let me uh, grab some new uh, 1K resistors.
All right, some new 1% uh, resistors here. And the drivers that are uh, that are on this board are the 1027s and the uh, 1023s. So does everyone know the equivalents to the 1023s and the 1027s if you don't have them on hand? So I need some 1027s, 1023s. Ten twenty sevens. Ten twenty three. So here's my 1023s and my 1027s. All right, so here's the 10, 20, new 1027s and new 1023s. So we're gonna start with the 1027s, 1027. Then a ten twenty three and a ten twenty three. Then a ten twenty seven. Ten twenty seven. And I'm going to stand these transistors up just a little bit uh, so as I can uh, fill in underneath ten twenty three. And a ten twenty three, and that is how that is done. So I'm going to just reach underneath because these are all stabbed into my mat. I'm just going to reach underneath here and I'm going to push down those resistors. And I'm going to raise those resistors up off the board ever so slightly.
or if this fails in the future, the resistors don't burn a hole in the board. All right. Maybe if I can get these resistors to work with me here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is fire up the soldering iron here. I'm just going to tack one leg of those transistors down. Oh, nothing like the smell of burnt PCB, that's for sure. So this will allow me to flip the board over without the uh, transistors falling out. All right, progress. And here in a second, we're gonna be able to put some power to the drive card and see what I have for the drive. Let's go ahead and out of the rest of the leads.
pretty simple. Uh, my soldering iron is set hot to 720 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this that allows me to apply minimal time to the vias, to the legs of the transistors, ICs, or whatever I may be soldering at that time. If there's one thing components don't like, it's uh it's heat. So you want to be able to uh, minimize, limit the amount of time you have going on the components. And that, they're all soldered in place. Now I'm just going to go through and cut the leads off. Remembering not to, uh, not to leave them on the board. There's been instances where I've fired up boards and I've left a copper or a, a transistor leg or resistor leg laying around underneath the board and uh, it will enlighten your day especially on a larger amplifier that had happened to me on a uh, tar amps i think it was a 12k and there was something underneath the board and boy did that board it lit up pretty quick all because I left something underneath the uh, the board when I powered up the power supply. Of course, we clean up. I did had to add a little bit of flux to one because I had bridged it together, and the quickest way to unbridge something is to use a little bit of flux. So there's all the drivers reinstalled. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to check and make sure that everything's good on this. Yeah, all right. Hopefully they leave a message. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, that's good to go. So let me roll this thing back around here. I'm going to double check the values of the gate resistors and I am going to power up the power supply let me get my scope run in here ah thermal paste thermal paste I know right we repair amplifiers uh, and we don't like thermal paste no no I don't like thermal paste. It has its purpose in the right amount. Yeah, I don't see any uh, gate resistors here that I would really have any concerns. Maybe over here back in this corner where it really got toasty. Nope, 100 ohms.
Yeah, 100 ohms. Nice. Yeah, those gate resistors looking good. They do have some zeners here too. So uh, that the gate drive Oh, and this green LED is about ready to fall off. Unfortunate. Uh, the gate drive, it'll tell me a lot when I power up the gate drive. Uh, the amplitude of the gate drive signal will tell me if uh, these zeners are still good to go. Yeah, and then you get to rebuild the whole circuit again. Yeah, believe it or not, Damon, when that happened on that uh, Taramps 12K, nothing happened to the board. Uh, it didn't short anything out. Something, it was shorted, it looked like on the bottom side it shorted the rails, but it was a leg of, I think it was a leg of a transistor, uh, so a TO220 size transistor, so it really just acted like a fuse, and when it blew, it just blew the, it literally disintegrated that little leg, and it spread it all over the bottom side of the board, but it didn't damage anything on the board. Let me... get a scope going here. And hopefully it doesn't drag down my video too much here. All right. Oh, what's positive and negative? Uh, what are they? Oh, hey. How nice of them. They labeled the board down here. That's nice. Thanks, guys. All right. So I see no reason. Uh, transistors are out, so it's not going to build any rail voltage. Positive is, I'm assuming, where they labeled positive. And then remote is going to be where they labeled remote. Any shorts? No shorts. The power supply turns to a blue light. I should have 12 volts. I can find my probe. I was so busy yesterday. My poor workbench here is kind of a mess. I should have 12 volts. Which I do. And what am I on? I'm in 50 microseconds. So I should be able to power up and get a drive signal. Um, let me see. Is this a 494 based? I honestly don't know if this is a 494 based. Or is this a 3525? I'm kind of blind, so excuse the light here real quick, guys. Oh, that's a 494. Okay, so it's just a standard 494. Oh, hey, they used two 494s. Oh, I know what they're doing. They're driving the auxiliary power supply also off the same card here. That's interesting. I was wondering because I didn't see a uh, gate drive IC for that because it's on the power supply card. All right, let's see. Do we have gate drive? Make sure nothing's grounded out. Fans, come on. Hey, we have gate drive. Fan, fan can use a little work. Relays, come on. Hey, we're looking good. We're looking good. Let's go ahead and you'll have to excuse the noise of the fan though. I I do have fans that are rebuilt, run perfectly. Uh, let me go ahead and fire this back up and check all the gate drives here. Uh, 6.79, 6.8, 6.8, 
six. Six point eight five. That fan may or may not last very long. Of course, I can always just unplug it, but. Okay, good. I have to make sure I'm not. Uh... Oh, the auxiliary supply is also switching. That's nice. So that means I should have my auxiliary voltages that are good. You check the other side here 6.8. And 6.87. 6.87. So it's looking like 6.88. The drive is looking great. Hey, Richard. Hey, good to see you here. Yeah, you caught a live stream. Good to see you. Those trends are huge. Oh, huh. uh, um, that's true. But you got to remember the age of this board, though. Is there a date on this? The, let's see here. Um, 2006 is what I'm seeing. So this board was made in 2006, so you got to remember the time difference between the technology of 2006 and today. So, uh, for instance, the, the base 30K that I just did had, oh my gosh, how many transformers in it? I can't even remember, uh, 16 transformers or something like that. So that's all in your, uh, the technology. And of course, I don't have a green light because a green LED is broke off the board. Hey, base head. Hey, good to see you here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it is. It's just the just the change in time. Um, in today's world, you probably would have six. Probably, I would assume about six transformers here. Uh, this is designed, I think, obviously to carry a ton of current but uh yeah so we're looking good auxiliary supply is, supply is switching uh the uh let's see here twelve volts nice twelve volts across the zener Eleven point nine five. Yeah, I don't see any issue. Uh, that could be coming from the failure of this power supply. Twelve point zero nine, and last but not least, twelve point zero seven. Yeah, looking good. Um. Does anyone know the pinout for the auxiliary power of that 4060 output drive card by chance? Um, where am I going to find my auxiliary? Aha, I got gotcha. you. 14 positive. I found it. I found it. There's the switching side and 13.8 negative. Looking great. That is looking great. I'm thinking if I clean this board up, now that I can clean up the areas that I couldn't get to with the pins in, um, clean this board up. If I put power supply transistors in this, I will bet this thing will start. I'm not showing any signs that there's issues anywhere. Nice. And of course I have no rail voltage, so uh, the output section is just chilling out. Uh, yeah, looking good. Just a little bit of work I got to do over here from some damaged components from the end being loose. 
and uh this thing will be up and running yeah so mr david snyder i do believe this board will be good to go um probably here in the next couple days let me turn my power supply off there Uh, let's see here. Is that amp from when Soundstream wasn't owned by? Uh, uh, you know, uh, two thousand six. Um, I, I am not sure. I don't know uh, what year. I think two thousand six, two thousand seven is when a lot of manufacturers started switching uh build houses i i don't know i i left the amplifier world a long time ago i was in it for quite a long time as as a teenager uh, you know up into my 20s or so and then uh of course life um but from 90 probably 95 to 2001 I didn't I was not involved in the audio business. Uh, I opened my first audio business in 2001 uh, here in Central Washington. So that's when I got back into it. but at that point I was more into uh, custom box building, uh, custom car audio installations and car alarm installations. So uh, I really wasn't into the amplifier designs at that point. I didn't start getting into amplifier designs until 2019. So, yeah, so that's where I'm at on that. Stone cold drivers, just the way I like it. All right, so what time is it? It is, oh my gosh, it's 10.43 already. All right, so um, I am going to kick this amplifier aside. And I'm going to have to catch up on this because I'm going to run out of time today. Uh, Fridays are kind of a limited time for me. Let me show you something. I'll be right back. Let me, uh, let me switch boards here real quick. All right, so... Some people on my Facebook page had requested both amplifiers. I probably won't have a lot of time to get into both of these, but check what check out what happened to this. This is something I do not see a lot on uh, these Brazilian style boards. Do you guys see what happened to this? Yeah, I had to get on pretty early uh, today, Richard, because uh, my time is limited on Fridays. So I had to start pretty early. I'm super behind, not behind on repairs. I've got 21 amplifiers that are in line, so I have to uh, stay on top of them. Uh, um you know demon that's what i was looking at i don't know that was a that was a 60 amp uh single diode and i could not tell where or what that was rectifying i i don't know why they would have such a big rectifier um 
I didn't really investigate the traces on that, but I would assume that no, see, because the auxiliary power supply transformer has discrete diodes in front of it, so it's not that. They, I don't know. That's a very interesting, uh, interesting diode that's sitting in there because it's the only one there. So, not sure. Oh, hey, thanks, Big Stone. Uh, thanks for that. I do appreciate that. Um, as I had mentioned in my last stream, my goal is to replace this camera right here with a, I think it's the Sony, it's either the X1 or V1, I can't really remember, but it's a Sony camera. It's a 4K camera. Uh, that's my goal, is to upgrade my camera. Uh, two goals, actually, is uh, upgrade my camera and switch out my uh, close-up camera. Thanks, thank you. Big thumbs up to you, Big Stone. Big thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, or are they on the board? If so, what are those weird rectifiers for? Uh, didn't agree about them on repair. It looks like you might not. No, yeah. I do believe that sound stream board is going to be just perfect. But see this? How often do you see this on a tar amps board? I... Let me uh let me drop my scope real, real quick. I'm st starting to see a little bit of lag. Uh, yeah, I don't see this very often at all where the rectifiers were literally blown off the board. The output section is fine. There's no shorts in the output section. Power supply section, however, is completely, uh, I don't want to say destroyed, Nothing's really destroyed, but both drive ICs have a hole in it, which really concerns me for the MCU. So um, I do have a, thank you, Big Stone, thank you. Uh, I do have a replacement 15K board uh, that I can replace the board with, but again, that takes the fun out of it. So. Do you guys think we should try to fix this? Repair that trace? I mean, that trace, uh, you're looking, oh my gosh, that's probably a good, oh, that's a good half inch of trace missing there. Uh, should we go ahead and repair this? Re uh, replace the gate drive ICs and hope that the... MCU is still functional. Um, and for all you guys that don't know what the MCU is, the MCU is the brain of the amplifier, the heart of the amplifier. It's what makes the amplifier work. Let me uh, show you the MCU real quick here on these Brazilian boards. So I get you in the shot here. So um, on these Brazilian boards, you have two gate drive ICs. You have the SI8244s. Again, I am in super low supply on these. If anyone knows any good contacts, I mean, I have good contacts. If anyone knows anyone that's got good prices on the SI8244s, please, please let me know down below. I'm in desperate need of SI8244s, and I don't want to spend $37 an IC on it. But it seems like they're going to force me to pay that price. Uh, but the MCU is this, this guy right here. So this guy makes everything work in front of it. Shane, oh, Shane has one uh, just filled in the board right there. Uh, all right. And it blew the rectifiers big time. Yeah, I uh very odd. I've never I've never seen this. And you know, I repair a lot of tar amps boards, and I've never seen these rectifiers fail like this. Uh I do have replacement rectifiers. MUR the sixteen sixty. 
CTG, so uh, I do have replacement rectifiers. But if the gate drive IC shorted to a point back to the MCU, the MCU could be dead. The only way to know that is to, uh, sh well, I could probably, well, I'd have to strip the power supply transistors to get rid of the shorts to be able to power it up, pull the gate drive ICs, because right off the bat, you know those are shorted, and see if I have gate drive from the MCU. I mean, I can do all that work. Yeah, that's excellent, Richard. That first board repair, I remember repairing my first board. I really didn't know what I was doing, but it worked. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's what we do. We fix amps. So let me just go ahead and pull the transistors. Oh, these are a mess. This is a this is what we call a complete power supply failure. Most of these I only got to cut one or two legs and they'll fall right off. This will clear the shorts. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll clear the shorts and pull the... Uh, gate drive ICs off the board and look and see if I have a drive from the MCU. If I don't have drive from the MCU, then I will not pursue repairing this board. Uh, uh, because I don't believe I have... I might have this one. Which one is this? Uh, no. A... So the MCUs I have um, are just the, yeah, for the HD65. So the HD line, the 65, 4000, 5000, 8000, and the HD6500. That's the only uh, PICs I have for that. The... So... Yeah, that's unfortunate. So if the MCU on this is dead, then I'm going to have to replace the board. Because I don't have another one for it. Boy, yeah, whoever was running this uh, had a heck of a battery bank, that's for sure. Which is good. You know, uh, I'd rather see people having massive capacitance than not having enough to feed these things, because these are absolute power-hungry amplifiers. You guys should see this uh, this base 30k that I have in for repair is not I don't know if it was a special release of the 30k um, but it does not look like your standard uh, white finish 30k par amps it's I can't remember what it said but it, it's red it's really neat it's from a guy here in Washington uh, that I'm repairing it for. I still have to get it opened up and get him a quote on that. I've just been so far behind that I need to need to get that done. I make sure none of these legs are touching. None of these legs are touching. None of these legs are touching. Good, good, good. All right. Um, I'm not worried about gate resistors. I will pull both gate drive ICs off because they are physically burnt. This is another 
uh, another 15k amp. So at the gate drive IC, you do have an SMD electrolytic capacitor right next to the gate drive IC. So please make sure your guns are hot enough and quick enough to pull that IC without melting your uh, capacitor. Just like that, and they pop right off. Yeah, well, you guys can't quite see it, but there's there's a hole in the center of that. Let me just grab the other one real quick here. Ooh, the smell of burnt board. Oh, I love it. Going back to that ozone box idea. Ah, uh, now that's not very nice. That's not very nice at all. What? Are you kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. That uh, IC got so hot that it damaged the traces. Mm, and those are absolutely minute traces to repair. That's not good. But it may be good enough for me to see if I have drive signal, though. Let me flip it around again. And that's why I use these uh, these foam mats. Um, they're just super handy. I can set the amplifier on the mat. I can spin it around, move it around without having to pick up the board. Because, again, these are so heavy, they flex right in the middle. So the less I can pick it up, the less I have to pick it up, the less damage that can happen to any of these small traces right in the middle, especially right in the middle. I'm just going to take a quick peek at the traces on that to see what kind of situation we got going on there. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Oh yeah, that that's burned up pretty good, but they're not shorted out. I may be able to repair those traces if I have a good MCO. Key though, it's a good MCU. Let me check no shorts. Nope, no shorts. All right. So with no power supply uh, transistors in and no gate drive ICs, I do believe the amplifiers will power up and go to a blue light. Um, I know yesterday I had the gate drive ICs in on the 15K that I did, but I did not have power supply transistors in and it powered up into the blue light. So um, I should be able to see that I have uh, gate drive. I think it's pins two and four, I do believe, on these. Uh-oh, spammer in the chat. Ah, gosh darn it. Let's see here. Okay, all right. Hey, uh, it was Damon, right? Damon, are you still here? Um, I need to figure out how, uh, let's see here. Can I, let's see here. Uh, well. Thank you, Damon, for pointing that out first for me. Um, let 
Hey, Big Stone, yeah, hey, we'll catch you soon again. We will catch you. Uh, sorry about that. I kind of got behind on the old chat here. Uh, da, 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 da. Little meltdown, yep. Uh, spammer in chat, yeah, I want to see that 30K. Well, that board might be toasty, especially if uh, time is a factor. Uh, time, yeah, time is a factor, kind of, sort of. Uh, but I have done so many of these that I can have these in on the bench tore down repaired up and running based on the scope back in the case ready to test in about three hours so check my phone my phone was quiet check my phone uh Uh, my phone is check my phone nothing on my phone there uh did i miss something check your phone okay oh hold on where was i i was checking this let's uh let's see here if we have uh Let's see if we have this MCU that survived here. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Let's, uh... Da -da 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 -da. Should be good, should be good. I'm going to see if it'll start. And of course, we turn the power supply on, and that tells me pretty quick if I have a short in the power supply that's not related to the transistors, and I don't. Blue light's on. Oh, hey, how nice is the previous owner to leave me a little bit of wire here coming out of the remote? That was pretty nice. I like that. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Damon, for uh, getting rid of that for me. Let's, uh, let's see. What does this thing do? Ooh, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign when you have no fans. <laughs> uh, this could be really bad. All right, so there's no fans. Uh, and what does that tell you? Um, for the people that know these boards, uh, if you have no fans, that's a pretty bad sign. For the MCU, I should say. Um, I do, it does go through the cycle on lights here. So it does go through those cycles. But I get no fans, so let me grab my probe here. So blue, yellow, red, back to yellow, to blue. But no fans, unless the fans are toast. Mm. Mm. Not looking very promising. All right, so I'm just going to go to pin two. Who? Oh, this is not looking good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh I do believe we are going to have ourselves a bad, yeah, there's nothing, there is nothing on this drive. That's unfortunate. Of course, seeing that there's no fans also tells me a lot. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, oh, I oh, check your phone. I texted you. Oh, hey, look who is in. Good to see you. Um, 
Avelio, is that how you say it? I can never, I've never really learned how to pronounce your first name there. Hey, good to see you. Um, did you get all my information that I sent you for that card? Uh, was still showing on mine for some reason. I refreshed Micromage, Micromage, Micromage. Um, Oh, 30k video. Yeah, yeah. That is, those 30k's are huge. They're monsters. Um, let me think here a second. Am I overlooking something? Why I'm not getting? Uh, why I'm not getting? I should see. Yeah, I should see the. I should see the gate drive. I should see the gate drive. Oh, wait a minute. Did I see it? Oh, there is gate drive. Oh, I see it. Nice. I have it on pin four. You guys see that on the screen there? There it is, there's gate drive, pin four. I guess I just was not making a good enough contact. Well. have it on four okay so I have it on four and two there so I should have it on four and two here it just could be that the pad got so burnt up that I'm not oh no I do oh excellent so we do have gate drive well this amp board Is repairable. Uh, why is the MCU not switching the uh, fan though? Which I do believe is this transistor right here that's responsible for switching the fan back to ground. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hands be burnt out? Nah, no way. Oh. 8.6 mega ohms. Well. Oh. Ah. Well, there's a reason why these fans don't work. It's because the fans are open. Thanks, Damon, for uh, for doing that for me. Again, um, sometimes I forget to look over at the screen over here. What's going on? So the fans on this are so it's still repairable. Uh, 100% I do believe I don't have to re I don't think I have to replace this board um, But it's going to require definitely require some parts Which is no big deal Just to double check the resistance of these fans here. Uh, 
500 K. Mm, probably not so much. 500 K on the fans. Oh, the fans aren't dead. Oh. Oh, fans aren't dead, but they sure sound bad, which is typical for tar amps. Oh yeah, those fans, they need to be serviced. So when your when your fans are good, but in circuit you're reading in the mega ohms, what do you check? Quite simple on this. There's a resistor that uh, supplies the voltage to the fan itself. Ten ohm, ten ohm. Still not good. Well, hopefully, there's a little hole right there in the middle of that resistor. I may have to do some work on the fan circuit. Oh, yeah. There's a hole in that resistor, but not in that one. Hmm. Interesting. Because it should switch. It should. Should switch my fans. Well, I think that's going to be the least of the worries, though. Um, so this resistor's got a hole in it, which means the transistor that drives the fan. So the fans get 12 volts uh, all the time. The fans get switched by the MCU uh, through a transistor, it gets pulled to ground. So the circuit itself is a switched ground circuit. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't look at chat all the time. Um, I try to stay on top of it, but uh, uh, it really, really just depends how busy I am at the moment. Uh, so this needs new. This needs a lot of new things. So this needs new ten ohm resistors. Uh, da, 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 on the drive, gate drive ICs, it's going to need all new gate resistors. With this kind of fault, yeah, 4.9 ohms, hey, 24 ohms, yeah. So all new gate resistors, kind of like yesterday's were all new gate resistors, all new transistors. These are the 1404s, I do believe. I have already forgotten from yesterday's. Oh, wait, I just cut them all out. Let me see, 1404s. Uh, yes, they are the IRF 1404s. Um... So, 
this amplifier is repairable. I will more than likely just repair the board and not replace the board. I don't see a reason to replace the board. Um, as long as I'm able to get everything up and running, like the fans, which I do believe is just going to be a transistor on that. Let me uh, double check. I know I should just uh, pull a schematic on this, but thermal paste. Uh. I'm just going to check this transistor real quick and see if I have any switching. It's probably not going to switch because it's going in to protect because I don't have. Yeah, because I don't have the drive ICs and because it doesn't see a power supply, it may not turn the fans on. So that could be because there is a delay uh, between firing up the board and then the fans starting. So I think it's going to be looking for rail voltage or at least the power supply does it uh, it doesn't know anything about the power supply so it's gonna be looking for rail voltage i think before it starts the fans so it may be okay just need to service the fans and replace this resistor that's got a hole in it so seven eighteen. So, um, I, uh, sure you have. Hey, Cliff. Hey, good to see you here. Just got to work and Lord and behold, you're on YouTube. Good to catch you, buddy. Hey, thanks. Good to see you too, Cliff. Yeah, I, uh, been busy this morning. I'm running, running out of time, but, um, uh, I'm trying to, trying to get some video in for you guys. Uh, working on this, uh, Tarim's 15K here, this base 15K. Uh, debating if I was going to replace the board or not because of the damage. This is, has some substantial damage done to it and some trace damage, but I think I think it's savable. I think I can save this. So uh, it's going to take a little bit more time than usual because these traces are so small to work with. I'm going to rebuild the copper over here. Uh, of course rebuilding it with my copper sheet uh, just rebuild the trace back to the via the board isn't burnt it literally just blew the trace right off the board there's no absolutely no carbonization on that PCB so I think I'm just gonna rebuild this I don't have any questions about durability um, after the repair, so should be good. Well, I hope things are good for you, Cliff, uh, and, and all you guys. I'm going to have to run, Anya. I got to take care of some business here before uh, my kids get out of school. They get out early on Fridays, so I... Uh, have to make my plan of attack for the rest of the day, which I think what I'll do is clean up that sound stream, uh, the tarantula, that 10K, I'll clean up that board, uh, get some power supply transistors put in, and probably just record a video on the power up of that for the owner. And then on this 15K here, I will go through and pull all the transistor legs and 
uh, repair the traces. Uh, probably service the fans and there's oh no replace the fans the fans have got broken blades in it so i will replace those oh yeah both i'll replace those we'll get this board back up and running yeah um I do always thank you guys for watching. Um, I've uh, been just absolutely amazed with the growth of the channel and uh, just the the huge community support. I have all sorts of amplifiers in line, and I have my first ever Banda amplifier in. Uh, you want to talk about an interesting design when I thought Banda was a more of lean towards the Brazilian design. I'm just not seeing that on this Banda amplifier. So, um, yeah, I've got uh, some some old school JBLs I got to do. I got some Alpines, some Scars, some some Phoenix Gold amplifiers, uh, some Hyphonics amplifiers, and um, I got 21 amplifiers I got to get done. That's not including the ones that are supposed to show up every day. So, again, I thank you guys for watching. I got to run. Oh, hey, hey, Damon, I got your text in. <laughs> uh, so, um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will be back soon. I promise you guys, uh, we'll keep an eye on my Facebook channel. I don't know what you call Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook user. Uh, keep an eye out. Uh, that's where I try to, if I'm going to go live, I'll post there. Um, I have a pretty good following on Facebook. Facebook. Um, just watch for my notifications. Uh, I'll try to give an advance notice as much as possible for the next one, and we'll uh, we'll keep on trucking. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll be right back with you before you know it. Keep your fingers safe. Stay out of the rails when you power these things up. Have a good one. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Thanks a lot.